Okay. So now let's use CloudFormation to create the CloudFront distribution. Previously we created by hand, but uh, it is important that we have our resources in infrastructure as code. So I'll go to resources.yaml file. Now this is the file that we added our CloudFormation for DynamoDB table, Cognito user pool, and so on. So let's add a comment. This is our CloudFront distribution. And we'll start with a logical name. I will call this uh, CloudFront distribution. Now we have to define the type and the properties belonging to the CloudFront distribution, CloudFormation. So let's go to Google and I'll search for CloudFront CloudFormation. And we can go to the very first link here. And there I will choose the YAML version. Now I can see the type is AWS CloudFront distribution and these are the properties. So let's copy this part and I'll come here and paste it in. Let's do a quick formatting. All right. I'll remove the tag section. But it's important to fill in the data for this distribution config. So if we go back to our documentation, I can see this uh, distribution config is a required type. So let's go into the value. I'll click on this red color one. And now I can see it's expecting bunch of attributes. Now one thing I would do usually is search the required attributes. I just search yes here, then I will find out all the attributes that is required. So enabled is a required attribute. So let's go ahead and add this field right away. So this determine whether this distribution is enabled or disabled. So let's add that one and enable is true. And the next important thing that we have to configure are our CloudFront origins. Because can you remember when we were doing it by hand using CloudFront uh, console, we were defining origins. So here we can define our origins in the origin section. So let's use this one. So you can see origin is an array. I'll paste it here. So let's go to this red color origin and see what attribute does it requires. And there are a few attributes here. Again, I will type yes. So then I will see what are the required attribute. See for one particular origin, we need to have the domain name and the ID. Now those two are required. So let's start with the ID. I'll add the ID here, ID. And I will call it REST API origin. And then we have to define the domain name. So this is the domain name of the origin. Now here we have to define the domain name of our API gateway. Now API gateway is configured through our serverless uh, framework. And I can find the corresponding cloud formation in the dot serverless file. And here in the dot serverless file, I can open this CloudFormation template update stack JSON. Now this is a long file. There I can find this API gateway REST API section. Now this is the corresponding CloudFormation that serverless framework configure it for us. But uh, we only have to add that abstraction, which is uh, only this section. Then the serverless framework will convert this part into CloudFormation but we can find that corresponding cloud formation here in the update stack JSON. Now we need to construct the domain name from this API gateway REST API resource. So how can we do that? There we are going to use an intrinsic function called join. Let me type it out and then explain you what it is. Now I have added a bunch of code. So let's go over that. Now my intention is to create this uh, domain name. 
Now this is our API gateway and in the dashboard section we can find that domain name you can remember we previously added that. So here in the domain name the first part is the API ID and we can get that API ID by referencing the API gateway resource name. So we know what the resource name is this is the resource name and we can use ref intrinsic function to return the id and then the next part is the execute api string which is this part and then the region and amazon aws.com so those are the rest of the value now i'm using the serverless framework uh, variable to return the region so there is this dollar and in the curly braces I can use AWS colon region to get the region of the stack and finally this is another hard-coded string Amazon AWS.com we need to combine all of these pieces of string and for that we are using this join intrinsic function and when we are joining these strings we are joining with period we have the API ID period execute api string period ust st1 the region period amazon aws.com thereby we will construct that api domain in this manner then we have to configure another attribute and that attribute is the custom origin config now in this custom origin config we have to define the origin protocol now you guys can remember we made sure to indicate whether this origin support HTTPS or HTTP or both. So here we have to say, okay, this only supports HTTPS. So we do that with custom origin config. So let's add that one too. And this is the value that it supports, the type of it. So let's go into that. It supports these attributes. So one of those attribute is origin protocol policy so let's click into that now here it specifies the protocol http or https so this is exactly what we need we don't have to fill in all these attributes so let's use this one and as for the value we will use https only now the other options are http only or match weaver i'll put that one now these are the attributes that we need for our API gateway origin. And next, we need to define the cache behaviors. Now remember we whitelist that authorization header. We did that through cache policy. So first and foremost, we need to define a cache policy for our CloudFront distribution. And we do that outside this CloudFront distribution. Now this, there's a separate type for it. So let's add it up here. And let's add a command this is the cache policy and i'll add the logical name rest api cache policy so if i go back to this uh, documentation of cloudfront uh, cloud formation i should see there's another type called cache policy so let me click that and i'll copy the type and the properties section paste so it is expecting this cache policy config let's go into this red color cache policy config type and see what attribute do we have to specify and then now you can recall these attributes minimum ptl maximum and the default and so on so let's copy this one i'll replace this let's do a quick formatting Comment is not required, but we have to specify this value. What is the default ETL, maximum and minimum? How long do we have to cache our data in CloudFront? By default, I'll add 300, that is uh, five minutes. Maximum TTL, so let's click into that. So the default value is this, that is one year. So let's use that. And the minimum TTL, I will use 60 seconds, one minute. Now let's give it a name. I will call it uh, REST API cache policy. So this is the cache policy name. And then we have another attribute called parameters in cache 
key forwarded to origin. Now this is the place where we need to whitelist our O3 session header. So let's see what this type requires. So this is that type parameters in cache key and I'll click this red color type. Now here we have to define these attributes cookie configuration, enable uh, encoding and header config and query strings. So let me copy this, replace it here. All right. So on the cookie config, we need to define the cookie behavior. So let me show you that cookie config. And here we have the cookie behavior. So if you look at the cookie behavior, we can set it to none because we are not uh, including cookies to create our cache key. We are only considering the header value. Cookie behavior, none. Good. And we'll accept both Brotly and GZIP encoding. And then we have to define the header config. So let's quickly go into that type and see what values it supports. Let me go into red color head config. So here in the header behavior, we should not say none, but we will add whitelist. We are going to whitelist our O3 session header. So let's copy this one. Header behavior is whitelist and the headers that we are going to whitelist is the authorization header. All right. And query config, well, we don't include that also in our cache key. So let's set it to none. Let's see what it requires. I'll click into the red color query config. So query string behavior will set to none. All right. So this is our cache policy. And then we'll refer that cache policy in the cache behavior of our CloudFront distribution. So let me hit enter and add the cache behavior. Now there are two cache behaviors. One is the default cache behavior. You can remember that wildcard as well as any other custom cache behaviors. Default cache behavior is something we have to include. So let me go to CloudFront distribution again. I will go to this distribution cloud formation and they are in the distribution config. I can find this default cache behavior. So let's copy this, put it there and let's go to the type and see what attributes it requires. We don't have to fill all of these attributes, but there are a couple of uh, required ones. First one is the target origin ID, which is this one. So to which origin are we targeting this caching behavior? Now this is our default cache behavior. So let's put that one here. So we are targeting the API origin. So we will add the API origin as our default behavior as well. So I'll just add the ID I defined in this origin. Next, we need to define the cache policy. If we scrolled up here, we have to specify the ID of the cache policy. So we already created a cache policy up there and let's use that intrinsic function called ref and I'll refer the cache policy logical name that will return me the cache policy ID. Okay, so that will link that cache policy with the default behavior. And finally, we have to specify the Weaver protocol policy how our client access our CloudFront, HTTP, HTTPS, or match Weaver. So here we have it. So let's add this one. So the accepted values are allow all, that means HTTP or HTTPS, redirect to HTTPS or HTTPS only. We'll use HTTPS only. Only. Now similarly, we'll define our custom cache behavior so I will just copy paste this one. Instead of default cache behavior, let's add that cache behavior section. Now this is an array, so let's add it as an array. 
So these things are the same. Target origin is the uh, REST API origin. Cache policy is the same cache policy, HTTPS only Viva protocol. But apart from that, since this is a separate cache behavior, we have to define the path pattern. So the path pattern that we are targeting is slash dev slash ta. So all of this path that matches this will direct it to this cache behavior. All right. So those are the things that we require as part of infrastructure as code. So we have our CloudFront distribution and then we have our cache policy. We refer the cache policy in our CloudFront distribution caching behavior. So now let's go ahead and deploy it. So we can do SLS deploy dash dash stage. You can do it dev, demo or whatever the stage that you prefer. All right, so I got an error. It says this cache behavior is not permitted. Well, I made a typo here. It has to be cache behaviors. My mistake. Let me redeploy. All right, so now it is completed. So let's go to AWS console and go to CloudFront and see if we have a CloudFront distribution properly configured. Now, this is the CloudFront distribution that got created. So let's go into it and let's go to the origins. Now I can see the REST API origin is configured. REST API origin with the origin domain name as well. You can see now it has a proper origin domain that is configured as a custom origin. Let's go to the behaviors. Now there are two behaviors, the default behavior and the slash dev slash tar behavior, both pointing to the same origin and both of them using the same cache policy. So let's have a look at the cache policy. I'll go to the policy section here and under the cache section, we have this API REST API cache policy. So let's go into that. And these are the things that we configured minimum TTL to 60 second, maximum one year and the default five minutes. And we enable both compression and we have whitelisted one of the headers that is authorization header. So this will be forwarded to the origin. Okay, so that's what I wanted to cover in this lesson.